John, this may sound like a joke, but it isn't. On occasion at night, I'll wake up in a cold sweat thinking that there could have been nothing, not just no objects, but no space, no time, no possibilities, no nothing. Uh, why is there something? I see. So there were a few questions buried in there a bit. I mean, one question is, could there have been nothing? Mm -hmm. And we can answer that. And there's a yes and a no. Mm -hmm. And then whichever way we go, we could try the question, what, well, why is there um, something? Or why is there not nothing? And, you know, it's, even if you think that there could have been nothing, you might think there's something useful to say about why, why there's something. I mean, if I could have been, I could have been an axe murderer maybe, but still there's something useful to say about why I'm not. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so are, you really, are you mainly interested in could there have been nothing or mainly interested in why is there not nothing? I think that's the right order, because some people claim that there could not have been nothing, that that's an incoherent concept, that there has to be something or other, because you can't define nothing has to be t t defined in terms of something, and so it turns on itself. So, is it so could there have been nothing? Let's, could start there, let's start with that one. Yeah, yeah. Could there have been nothing? I'm, I'm, I'm and I'm with, I'm with I mean, you. I think if you, at least historically philosophers have thought that there are some kinds of things, more abstract things, that couldn't have failed to uh, exist, so like numbers. Uh, I think if you're going to look at candidates for things that have to exist, the more natural candidates are things in the abstract realm. Sure. But I don't think it's in any obvious way straightforwardly incoherent to think that they don't exist and that numbers don't exist. And if you think that they don't exist, you certainly don't think that they have to exist. Right, right. So I think for all these categories of abstract, it's certainly coherent to um, say that none of them exist. So, so let's go up the chain on that, though. So we can say coherently that there could have been a total world without any particles. That's easy. Let's say, yeah, that's easy. Okay. Right. Oh, it that feels easy. I mean, maybe those feels. surprises, but it certainly feels okay, like... So yeah. Sometimes scientists actually would begin to disagree with that because they would have uh, the universe popping into existence from nothing, but their nothing basically would be quantum fields yeah, but, and all the, that. The, the, can scientists speak to whether there could have been? Well, some no people particles? think they can, but they, I don't think they can. Okay. But, 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 but the, I just want to work up the chain of existence. Yeah, good. So, so we started with the agreement that there could, could have been no, no particles. particles. Now, yeah. could there have been no forces? I think it, I would feel that, yes, there could have been no forces. Excellent. Okay. Then you go up to could there have been no space and time? And it's a little harder. That's harder. And yeah. where do you stand on that? I mean, maybe we could roll it into space-time. Oh, fine, know? fine. So, so could there uh, have been none of that? Uh, I mean, it certainly seems so. Okay. I mean, uh, okay. All right. uh, I mean you feel that the, the burden's on the people who say that there has to be... Space-time. Space-time. Okay, all right, I'm with you there. Yeah. Now, let's get, now it gets really hard, because now, now you go into, I think, the next step is abstract objects, which are numbers, which are the easiest ones. Or truths. Let's or take, truths. could there have been... Take the, the truth that there's either nothing or something. Right, right. Uh, could that, there have not been the that, truth right, that there's right, nothing right, at? Right. And so, you know, so if you think there are things like truths or propositions, then it's quite natural to think that they Had have to, to exist. exist. So you might think, well, there could have been maybe nothing concrete, but even if there had been nothing concrete, there would have been the truth that there's nothing concrete, right. and so there would have been something. I don't know whether that will help you go back to sleep at night, you know, <laughs> thinking that at least the truth that there's... <laughs> but I'm not sure which yeah. way is going to make me sleep. That's my problem. I'm, I, 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 I sort of like the idea that there could have been nothing, but there is something. Uh, but but uh, truth is... Uh, yeah, I might say also... I'd, surprised to know there is a small there are a small minority of philosophers that think everything exists necessarily that you even you and this table couldn't have uh, uh, not existed. E e e so e I just I'll just mention that e in passing. E e e even giving given the, the the constraints of evolution and contingency upon contingency. Yes. Yeah, so you could have not been concrete. 
you could have been like an abstract marble, and oh. that's their picture. Oh, I see. That you, you, as it were, necessarily exist. It's just, uh, it could have been that you were stripped of all your concrete clothing. <laughs> <laughs> but you couldn't actually have uh, not the, existed but, at all. But that means everything has to exist. That's it. That's exactly. A, that's so, a, yeah. That Maybe makes, that will uh, comfort you even more, so, <laughs> if you could buy that. So, so is, is that the, what, what, what has been called modal realism, which is like... like no, I don't... I, that's, like, that's, let's call Call that necessitism. Yeah. Okay. So I have a colleague that's uh, that's pushing, a pushing, yeah, pushing. So, so that pushing every the, yeah. everything, everything. It, the, the picture is roughly necessarily everything exists necessarily, and yet, and that some things exist concretely because they're picked out of that unit. That yes, that yes. Universe. So it's not like you're concrete necessarily, but it's just the way that you are that changes, but not. <laughs> not whether you, whether you are okay. All right, are, are you? So we 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 were in tempted our, by that. <laughs> in our level of you love plenitudes, <laughs> you, you love maximizing things, right? Lo yeah, adding rather than subtracting. Right, yeah. right. So you're a big adder. Yeah. Okay. So so going back to, to nothing, we we eliminated. We can, we can get away without particles, without forces, without space and time. Well, maybe numbers, not. If, we, if we're a necessitist, we can't get oh, rid of anything. Okay, okay. But let's leave that to one okay, side. Fine, okay. Fine. Fine. Yeah. And then we're at numbers. And then we talked and about truths. truths. Yeah. So now truths and possibilities. Are they, is, is possibilities a subset of truths? How, how, do, how do possibilities work? That it was always possible that there could have been a universe, even if there were none. You can't get rid of the possibility that there might have been a, a, a universe. It well, seems to me I impossible to get rid of that possibility, no matter what. Yes, but so okay. I think a question always is whether these are arguments for the existence of objects. I mean, so-called nominalists in mathematics will agree that one on one's two, right. but will say that doesn't require that objects exist. That, that, Similarly, there's a kind of guy that says, oh, necessarily it was possible that there's something, but that yeah. doesn't mean that there's this thing, a possibility that exists. Right, right. So a key decision point to make about your argument is whether... Uh, it's being possible that so and so really requires that there exists this thing, a possibility. And if it doesn't require that possibilities exist, things being possible. So, so, then... so is that a semantic argument around the, the question of is a possibility or is a truth something that exists or not? I don't know whether it doesn't sound like a semantic question. It sounds like a question whether a certain kind of thing exists. I mean, it's not a semantic question whether mermaids exist. Right. Uh, it doesn't but, but, sound like a semantic question where the possibilities exist. But to me, that does. I mean, it's a weird question. It's not a question you're used to, but it yeah. doesn't sound like a semantic question. But you have to know what you mean exist if, if the possibility exists. Well, when I say possibilities exist, I mean roughly exactly what I mean by exist when I say that mermaids are don't exist. So how, how, do you, how are you on, on existence of possibilities? Are they... Th things that are real. I, I haven't thought about that too much, to be honest. But um, I'm the sort of person that likes truths and falsehoods existing. Uh -huh. And uh, if you if we at least think about things like it's possible that, say, there are, are winged pigs. Yeah. Uh, the the thing that that seems to be possible there is that there are winged pigs and that seems like a claim the sort of thing that's true and false so at least and that's an existing thing yeah the claim yeah the claim is, is an the claim existing. that does so i and necessarily that exists you can't ever get rid I of think that it feels like it, it i mean i'm not saying it's it's totally obvious but it seems quite natural and intuitive to me to think that insofar as you're going to believe that there, there are claims uh then you should think that they and exist necessarily. Yeah. So the 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 maximal nothing we can have, if that's right the way to put it, uh, is you know has stuff in it that are truths and claims and maybe abstract yeah. objects like numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That that seems to be well the, at least uh, one. That's one natural picture. That's what's guaranteed. Okay. You've um, always got at least that, okay. and then you haven't got concrete. Right. Uh, uh, I think that's the default picture of a lot of philosophers. You can, God can, uh, as it were, erase the concrete, but yeah. can't erase the whole shebang. <laughs> so, yeah. e so even God, quote unquote, is not all powerful.
there's a separate issue there. What 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 one uh, wants to think about omnipotence. Mm-hmm. I mean, can God build rocks he can't lift, yeah, and right, can right, God right. make two and two five? It might be sort of like that, asking God to erase numbers. Right. And uh, I'll let you know if I can sleep better. Okay. <laughs>